overall is that the worst is behind us. It bottomed in October when I wrote a big Twitter article and a big global macro investor piece calling it the bear market killer, which is October. At this point in the cycle, the kind of macro spring, you tend to see the S&P doing this, the NASDAQ doing this, growth tech doing that, and crypto doing that. And that's my expectation. I'm very bullish risk, bullish crypto, bullish technology, bullish carbon credits, bullish bonds, um, bullish gold, don't really have any of it. Where the hell are we right now? I think I've outlined to you in the past, and certainly on Real Vision, at depth, my thinking. My thinking is that we are hurtling off the edge of the cliff into a recession. That recession, we've been forecasting, Julian Bittle and myself at Global Macro Investor, from um, about this time last year, actually. We saw it in the forward-looking data, and the current data is catching up. All the forward-looking indicators, like new orders, are completely off a cliff. Uh, employment, prices paid, you name it, every single indicator. We have a database of one and a half thousand indicators um, at Global Macro Investor, and it's all falling off a cliff. So this is the point where you get to on Twitter, where everyone goes, oh my God, there's a recession. Surely stocks are going to go down. No shit, Sherlock. They've already gone down. The Nasdaq went down 37.7%, I think, uh, from the high. But what's interesting is that the forward-looking indicators are starting to suggest that we will hit the bottom um, of the recessionary wave in about April. So we're likely to get, I think, two, maybe three quarters of negative GDP. But I think it's more akin to the 1990s style recession, which was the stock market fell 20%, the economy fell 2%, ISM went down to 40 or so, it all recovered, there was some overhang, the economy was slow for a while, and then eventually recovered. Overall, is that the worst is behind us. It bottomed in October when I wrote a big Twitter article and a big global macro investor piece calling it the bear market killer, which is October. And bang on schedule, the whole bear market stopped in October. I had lots of technical signals like DMARC counts telling me monthly and weekly and daily that this was probably the low. I'd already had that in crypto back in June for ETH. And then again in Bitcoin and others uh, into October. So we've got this perfect set of signals across everything. The liquidity cycle picking up maximum bearish sentiment, the worst I've ever seen. And I I think in Global Macro Investor, we put together 40 of these sentiment indicators of stuff going back to the 60s. And it was the worst um, sentiment the markets have ever seen. I'm now bullish risk. And I've been flagging this for a while, and I flagged it when I started buying crypto in June, and I flagged it when I re-added it. And I've been talking about, I think the inflationary pressure is coming. I think inflation goes negative next year. Um, actually, this year, sorry. I think the rate of decline of commodities is much sharper than anybody realizes. I think wages are rolling over. Um, I also think rents are rolling over. So the whole lot is coming down, and that will go all the way through till 2024. At this point in the cycle, the kind of macro spring, you tend to see the S&P doing this, the Nasdaq doing this, growth tech doing that, and crypto doing that. And that's my expectation that um, if you're, you know, not volatility adjusting the returns, you want to get the fast, the back the fastest horse, it's likely to be crypto, that it'll be technology stocks, the growthy end, stuff like ARK is already up 100% or so. So that's basically the macro setup for me. I'm very bullish risk, bullish crypto, bullish technology, bullish carbon credits, bullish bonds, um, bullish gold, don't really have any of it. Uh, Raoul, is this the start of a new bull run in tech? Will crypto follow through? Crypto led it, um, and I think that it is, um, and tech is following through. So uh, yes and yes. Um, and I've been saying that for some time, so it's not it's not like, oh, I'm the price action. I was saying that as the prices were collapsing in October, and when the price was collapsing in June in crypto, um, that I've been positive. No, you know, I, I hope I'm right. I don't, I'm not always right, as we all know, right? <laughs> uh, would you have a conversation with Richard Hart? No. Um, I don't really believe in what he's doing and I, I think it's not fair on investors but take your own choice I could be dead wrong you could be dead right um, and so I would rather stay away from it um, you know you can't ask me to interview people and then if we've suddenly interviewed somebody in the past that goes bust or was a scam we get pinned for the blame which is what everybody tries to do to every media company in FTX and other stuff um, this guy's got red flags everywhere which is why nobody really wants to interview him um, and again, we could be wrong. Um, no judgment. I don't know. What do you think about ETFs in crypto? I think we've all learned the lesson that they're terrible. 
um, in terms of uh, anything that exists is based on a futures contract. Um, will they come? The, the, the SEC is just it's just a mess. So I, I doubt it. I think they just want to have that battle, and that battle is we don't want you to have that. Meanwhile, something like George Noble's ETF, who was attacking me on Twitter all the time, George Noble's ETF, he's like, oh, Kathy Wood, these people are terrible, they're shocking, crypto's terrible. I think his fund's down 70% in a month, uh, which is pretty shocking. That stuff shouldn't be allowed to be an ETF. It's typical, right? This is one of the reasons I like crypto so much is there's a bunch of VCs going to make a bloody fortune out of AI, and you and I won't get a single bit of it uh, unless we've got the money to put into an uh, uh a VC portfolio. While in crypto, we get early stage stuff. Yes, some stuff, um, you know, the VCs dump the tokens, but generally still it's very early stage. So there are opportunities. Um, so listen, actually the simple answer is, and I, I did some work on this, just by Microsoft and Google. For God's sake, Google have hit, hit red alert. They have more AI technology than any other company in the world. They're gonna launch 20 new products and Microsoft's just put $10 billion into this and going to integrate it into everything. Um, I still think we're just at the start of a bear market. Okay, so we're down 38%, but we're just at the start. Okay, got it. Interest rate heights are not done at all yet until the summer. Um, well, you might be right. Um, I, the question is, is where do you see inflation and, and what economic analysis that allows you to suggest that the rate rises will be, that they're already... Um, above core CPI, Fed, fund, Fed funds, and I think we'll be above headline CPI by about April. It's really difficult to imagine. So sorry for being flippant, but um, I, I think I just find it really, really difficult to believe when forward-looking inflation indicators are down 2% or less by June and flipping to negative near, year on year. I just don't see where that's coming from. Now, again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we do have further bear market. This is Lo and behold, one of those magical bear markets, which is the down 50 percenter. We don't get those often. Um, but if it's a magical down 50 percenter, then you'll be right. If it's a bear, ordinary bear market like 1983, 1990, uh, the 1950s, they were all about 25, 20, 20 to 30 percent. Well, you know, really, I'm well out the bloody risk curve. And that's everything they got absolutely crapped on last year. ARK, Coinbase. Scottish Mortgage Trust in London, um, any of these long technology names, um, I think that that's extremely hit, uh, risky, but has a very high reward. And crypto is phenomenal for that. And I think, you know, ETH is risky enough and has enough fundamental structural uh, benefits and opportunities that I think it should be fine. Right? So I would, I would definitely go with, yeah, it's crypto, it's exponential age. It's the kind of stuff I've been talking about. Uh, if you can operate in different countries, the market I've liked, loved for a long time, it's done really quite well, has been Iran. Um, it's difficult because they keep changing the sanction, who's allowed to invest and who isn't, but Europeans still can. Um, and that's pretty interesting. What a stupid situation. We have to go through the courts to get a bloody regulatory ruling. I mean, again, Gary Gensler, I've said this, I've said this on every time I've done this show, is that guy needs to be fired. He's letting people down. He's letting a whole industry down. He's holding America back. Um, and it's just inexcusable. It's inexcusable to allow shitty ETFs to launch, to blow up, and then forcing people to use closed-end funds that trade at massive discounts, allowing ETFs on pretty much anything you want. But when it's crypto, oh, no, sir, no, sir, can't do that, sir. And everybody loses fucking money. I mean, he's cost people 50% because of that um, grayscale because he wouldn't approve a product that works. It's it's shockingly bad. This Shanghai fork is a big deal in ETH, really big deal. I talked about how big a deal ETH yield is, but we were stuck with one year yields, right? So then you had to go to Rocket Pool and you had to go to Lido and others to get um, um, liquid, liquid staking. And that takes different risks that you might not understand. And so I don't do it. But protocol ba based yields, which is what staking is, is very interesting. And the Shanghai fork allows you to stake for whatever flexible period you want. So that means that ETH that I hold, I'll just stake because I know I can sell it tomorrow as opposed to being locked up for a year, having to guess what the market's doing in a year's time. It's a really big deal because A, it creates a derivative market, a yield curve. Also, it creates, um, it takes, it's going to take 40% of the entire bloody ETH off the market because we just sit there and get the yield. 
So 40% off the market in a deflationary asset in a bull market. Holy shit. I think it might get dislocated in price if we're not careful. I think there's going to be a lot of education on blockchain. Uh, we're working on something, actually. Um, so there'll be NFT certification, but I think there's a whole bunch of stuff that could be done there. So I think it's an intriguing path. And I think it's it's very real. Uh, are you staking ApeCoin? Yes. And that was my test for ETH. It's been very simple and it's obviously ridiculously high yield, but it just feels like it's printing money, right? But um, so I don't have high expectations. I just want to see the whole process. Um, I'm playing Dookie Dash. Uh, Dookie Dash, for people who don't know, is the game, the kind of engagement game to use to test out the the thesis of using ApeCoin for gaming um, and get people excited about the ecosystem as they start rolling out to the metaverse. I uh, haven't played it. I don't really play games. Um, but um, yeah, why the hell not? It's a good idea. Let's see what happens. I have no idea what type of data here. It's all a new world. Connection of wallets is important. So we need to track the crypto as it goes around a system and who's got what, because that is kind of like owning Google now, where you get to see who's engaging in what and when and how. So that social graph element or supply chain element, I think that's really interesting. Polygon, what do you think? Well, got a treat for you. I got one of the founders on on Rouse Adventures Crypto coming next couple of weeks. Um, amazing. We will do another whole AMA about AI because I any of you are understanding the scale of what is happening and what it means to society. Um, I think it is the largest def inflationary shock maybe the world has ever seen um, and it is a it's probably one of the largest step changes in a short period of time we will ever go through and we can't even get our heads around it we still think it's a google search engine that's where we think it is we have no understanding if somebody keeps asking is eth ultrasound money i don't give a shit i like it because it goes up because i think it goes up over time because people use it because it's a great network it's also got a vibrancy so you know i don't really care um, whether it's ultrasound money or not, I just I don't care about the money narrative right now.